Okay, my name is Phil Magnuson. Um, I'm filling in for Tanya, who could not make the meeting today. And uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, could we do a roll call of the trustees, please? Sure. Galavis? Here. Clenny? Here. Magnuson? Here. Pantera? Here. Westinsco? Four members ab um, present, Westinsco absent. Um, I wanted to mention that we have at least one board member who has uh, some time constraints today. So we were going to try to move through the meeting agenda rather briskly. Um, and I think it, it, it should be pretty straightforward and easy to do that. So I believe our first um, agenda item is to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Um, is there any discussion or could we get a motion to approve the minutes? I reviewed the minutes from the February 8th meeting and feel they accurately reflect the proceedings. I move we approve them as written. Second. Excellent. Um, all those in favor of the approval, please Aye. answer yes. Aye. 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 So the minutes are approved. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Um, it includes both the payment of bills and payroll and the financial reports. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move to approve um, all matters on the consent agenda. Uh, second. Second. Thank you. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the consent agenda is approved. Um, our next uh, a couple of items are a couple of reports from some of our partners. And I think first up, are the Friends of the Boise Public Library. Hi, good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Great. Um, it was with great pleasure last month that our board approved three funding requests from the library that total almost $50,000, $49,600 to be split um, $2,100 for kindergarten readiness packs, $13,000 in support of BCAF, which is having its 10th anniversary this year. And finally, um, $34,500 for the summer reading program. So um, coming out of COVID, we're, our, our income has been a little bit down, but we were delighted that we were able to meet uh, all, of the, all of the library's funding requests. And to that end, I would also like to remind everyone that our April sale will be the 7th through the 10th in the auditorium. So please come buy a lot of books so we can fund stuff again next time. Thank you. Wow, Jill, that, that's fantastic. Um, that's quite a contribution to the library. Um, I hope you'll pass back our thanks for that. And um, we, that's very much appreciated, I'm sure. So thank you. Um, next, up, next up is the Boise Public Library Foundation. Good afternoon, or uh, good morning still. Um, I don't have a lot um, happening right now as far as what to report. We have not met as a foundation since um, last time we met. Um, we met with the trustees, but um, we do meet tomorrow. But I will say that when the, the things that we've been working on um, that we're moving forward on is um, since our last meeting, we have formed a committee on the, of the foundation directors, a small uh, four member committee to, that, are, that is comprised of experts in human resources, um, hiring and so forth, and um, as well as a, a legal um, expert as well to try to move forward with what we need to do to um, take some of the tasks that the library staff has been doing over the past years for us. Um, we've talked about hiring somebody as before. Um, I am happy to report that committee has met. 
um, and they have some recommendations and they have some options that are going to be presented tomorrow at the foundation um, uh, meeting tomorrow that uh, will give us some idea of where we are going to go forward with a, a new hire or how we're going to um, take some of those tasks away and, and uh, take those away from the library staff that needs to be done. So I'll have more information next month when we meet about the uh, result of that presentation and that meeting. But aside from that, we are looking at uh, and funding also that we'll know more about tomorrow and I'll be happy to report that next month as well. Um, that uh, a request that has been made of the foundation and I'll pass that on as soon as I get a, a decision made tomorrow. And that's all I've got. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, any questions or comments for our for our partners? Um, okay, thanks a lot for those reports. Um, next is our director, uh, Jessica Dorr. Could you uh, give us your update? Thank you, uh, thanks members of the board and the foundation and the friends. Uh, I wanna you know, thank the friends for their very generous sponsorship of our uh, summer reading program of our uh, 10th annual Boise Common Arts Festival and uh, kindergarten readiness kickoff. So uh, all of our locations this week uh, have materials uh, for kids that are getting registered and uh, get excited for their first uh, chance to go to kindergarten. Uh, and we've had uh, our staff out in the schools helping uh, promote the library as part of that work. So we're really appreciative of that partnership. Uh, it's also really exciting to be here uh, with my entire library management team. Um, on Monday, the city of Boise, because uh, Ada community has moved into the medium risk for COVID, we've been able to change our mask protocols and our physical distancing guidelines. Um, so I've literally never had a board meeting with my entire uh, management team. And when I learned that they used to do it all the time, I was because <laughs> um, as you know, you've seen them on, uh, you've, you've seen them on screen before. Uh, this also, these changes allow us to uh, make optional masks in all our locations. So we still have them at the front door um, and people can, staff and community can wear masks to, based on their own preferences or their risk factors. Uh, we'll continue to have hand sanitizer, cleaning, uh, some of that stuff we are just really, uh, see how important that is in disease reduction in general. So we'll keep that in place. Uh, and we'll also be able to expand our indoor programming now um, because we will not have that same uh, capacity constraint. So you'll start to see more of our programs. Um, you'll, we've got a bunch that are scheduled for outdoors uh, because the weather is, is getting nicer. Uh, and we certainly know some of those music and movement classes and programs are outside and uh, really a great, uh, we'll keep those going outside just because of the attendance and, and how fun it is for the kids and families. Uh, but we'll also be able to do more indoor uh, programming. Uh, two other quick things. Uh, first off, I, I, I'm sure many of you have seen the news uh, that on Monday, the Idaho State Legislature uh, passed uh, House Bill 666, which removes a longstanding legal defense for public library staff. Uh, you know, staff that work at museums, schools, universities, and public libraries. Um, and we believe that this will, that, that longstanding uh, protection prevents uh, staff from being targeted for subjective claims regarding dissemination of materials that are harmful to minors. Um, so I'm sure you've seen there's been uh, newspaper articles. Kathy Stoller was in this morning's uh, Idaho Statesman talking about our collection development policy. Uh, we talk about why we're opposing this bill. We think it's unnecessary. Uh, we don't uh, believe that it determines you know, who determines what material is harmful. Uh, how's that applied? Um, who would be liable in this case? Um, we also believe it removes the role of locally elected or appointed library boards and school boards and the role that they have in selecting materials and overseeing requests for cons uh, reconsideration. So we're using this moment in time to really educate the public uh, and staff and stakeholders about our collection development policy. Uh, what's our process for making sure that we've got materials available for the whole community, but also how do we work with um, 
our locations to make sure that kids and youth and families find the materials that's appropriate uh, for the, all age groups um, and the, how we work with parents and caregivers to make sure um, that we're supporting them and helping make their children lifelong leaders. As you know, we actually, uh, we do an annual collection development uh, review and coincidentally, we actually had our collection development policy up. We talked about it in September, we wanted to bring it back um, out of order. Uh, that we would normally do. And part of that is because we recently got a request for reconsideration um, and we're not able to go forward with it because it was somebody who was not a Boise card holder. So somebody who uh, had searched our catalog but was not a Boise resident. And when we saw that, we realized, oh wait, um, our while our policy, actually if you read the policy, it very clearly stated Boise residents but the form that the, this person filled out did not make that clear. And we thought, oh, wow, we could, we could do better uh, in making our policy clear in terms of who can fill it out, how it's reviewed, but also uh, who it doesn't apply to. Um, so yeah, we will, we will continue to track that. We don't know what will, what will be the long result of uh, the Senate's consideration of House Bill 666, and obviously, as we learn more and how it might apply if passed, uh, we'll follow up with you. And finally, the last thing I wanted to mention uh, in your packet, we have a uh, what we're trying to put together is you know some of these discussions we're having about making sure that you have the information you need to be effective uh, in your role as financial stewards. Uh, and one of the things that we're really focused on is, is how to make sure you understand and are able to explain the library's financial structure, including of sources of income and the status of those sources. How can you articulate the library's value propositions of the community to residents to stakeholders? And knowing you know, what are the library's current and future financial needs. So sort of those three areas are, are what we're going to focus on as we as we develop more of the materials for our FY23 budget build and going forward, um, particularly in some of the capital and um, uh, repair and maintenance pieces. Um, but we're trying to put together a little uh, handy one pager that can be like a good place where you've got some of those key links to um, city materials. Uh, and uh, you know, the, we're trying to outline more of the cadence of that budget for you as well. So any feedback, obviously, uh, Brian, thank you for sending us some comments on that uh, this, earlier this week as well. And we'll, we'll make sure that we incorporate those as we go forward. Um, thank you, Jessica. Are, are you finished? I'm finished, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. It's easier, but I just turned you out. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess I'll follow up a little bit from a very personal standpoint. I, I think this bill that's been introduced and passed by the House is really critical. And I know the city of Boise feels that way too because they've written a letter to the legislator expressing their opinions of it. And I would encourage everybody to con contact your representatives particularly the centers now, senators now, because it's in their hands to express your thoughts about how this ought to be handled. So I think, I think it's a really important issue for the library. Um, so thank, thank you, you, Jessica. Um, our next item is uh, a topic concerning the facilities management, which uh, we've had some discussion of this already, and there's an update on the topic for us to consider. Thank you, Phil. This is Chloe. Chloe, I just, uh, Chloe could I just say thank you? Um, I want to set this discussion up. We, um, after our uh, February meeting, we took the feedback and the questions and we've really been working uh, with the facilities team to, to answer those. But also, I really wanted to share with you, uh, you know, as the director, how important we think this work is in, being, in enabling us to, to effectively manage the resources we have and how, you know, this allows, uh, as, as Rob, I think, said in the, the discussion in um, February, 
I care very much about what happens in the, uh, the programming in the buildings. And I have staff that are really committed to those services and those programs in the buildings. And I don't know how to put a roof on the building, which is why it's great that, that I have a, we, the city has a phenomenal team that's really good at putting roofs on buildings. Um, and this is for us a really great partnership that we think really brings out the best in uh, our being able to specialize and then work together so that we're really thoughtful about how we're providing the most um, you know, value for our taxpayers, um, but also really making sure that the buildings are, are beautiful, functional, uh, and continue to uh, be upkept as uh, the needs in the community changes. So I just wanna make sure uh, that that you heard from me sort of what how we've approached um, this partnership where this um, facilities work together and with that thank you chloe thanks jessica um great well so i'm hopefully successfully sharing my screen thank you again for having us this is part two of three um so we were in front of you last month and we'll be back next um, month as well. I am here today with Rob Bosefield from Public Works and York Detasny from the Facility Services Operations Team. Um, and we are planning to present a few recommendations to the board based on the feedback we received from you last month about how um, Public Works and the Facilities Operations Team will provide facility services to the library um, transparently and in a high quality way. And in in the interest of time, I know you all are trying to um, uh, end as closely to 1230 as you can. I'm going to move through my slides as efficiently as possible so that um, Rob and York can really um, dive into the details. To quickly sort of ground us in what we plan to cover with you today, Yorick is going to provide an in-depth overview of the ViewWork system, which is the software system um, that integrates into and makes data collection and reporting possible. That will set the tone for Rob to then talk about recommendations on how um, we would plan to report out and track the areas that, that we identified and you all provided feedback last month. So our goal is to address what we heard from you here and hear your thoughts about the recommendations. And then we plan to come back next month um, with a finalized plan for your approval. Just really quickly um, want to refresh your memory of what is um, in scope when we say maintenance work. We're talking lar planned large scale projects as well as day to day maintenance. What is out of scope is anything that is library operations or services oriented as well as management and oversight. And then also, the, a reminder of what um, we strongly believe are benefits to consolidation um, of the facility's maintenance work. We are seeing collaboration with other departments to utilize expertise in existing infrastructure um, as being a real key opportunity, more negotiating power for shared contracts. Um, and I think it's worth noting that while we are confident the library will realize these benefits in short time, up to this point, without the use of ViewWorks, we've been unable to track current dollars and efforts spent to the exact penny. Once we do make a transition, the idea is that we'll have a much clearer sense of the current state, um, thanks to that rigorous tracking that, that York's going to cover. Um, and then we'll be able to sort of go back and, and look and reassess um, once we have some solid data under our belt. So quickly um, reminding you all of what we heard from you and um, the areas that we're going to cover. We really heard from you all last month um, about wanting to make sure that the library facilities are well maintained and that delineation between sort of day-to-day -day operations and um, quick reactive as well as major repairs and maintenance and, and that longer term preventative um, approach. We heard that you wanted to better understand what the internal charging formula would look like, um, how the approval of major repairs and maintenance would work, um, the service level agreements which were included in the board packet that was shared out last week, and then I'll, I'll cover budget reporting which we have a little work to do on as well per, per what Jessica mentioned earlier, but we'll talk a little bit about what the outline of that would be. 
With that, I will let Yorick take it away. And Yorick, um, you can just team me up when you need me to advance the slide. Yeah, great. Thanks, Chloe. Um, so I think like, like you, I'm going to be moving through these slides uh, fairly rapidly in the interest of time. Always open to questions. So the, the current process for requesting work will, will you know, it, it's pretty much um, on par with, with what's been happening at the library. So uh, you go to the Boise homepage and navigate to the to a, to a portal uh, where where staff library staff fills out a simple uh, work request form um, and then uh, you know submits that. So what happens next is really where where the, the different happens. Uh, instead of generating an email to whoever uh, is responsible for performing that work, uh, as is currently the case, uh, the system generates a form in, uh, in our maintenance management system uh, that is ViewWorks. Uh, so ViewWorks, um, I think if you go to the next slide, I think, I think that'll be easiest. So, so what is ViewWorks? Basically, ViewWorks is what we call a, a CMMS, a computerized maintenance management system. Uh, and it allows us to do uh, multiple things. Uh, first and more, foremost, it's kind of an asset tracking software. So uh, we put in all, our, all building type assets uh, and uh, building sub assets. So, so the, the assets are the buildings, the sub assets are things like HVAC equipment, mechanical equipment, uh, whether it be finishes, drinking fountains, those types of things. Um, so, so by knowing what we have, we can manage it better. Uh, it also allows us to assign maintenance schedules to those various assets as well as uh, replacement schedules. So it helps us with uh, planning for budgeting or, or large scale replacements. Uh, and also it's a, it's a work order management system. So, uh, so we generate work orders either, either through staff requests or, or things that we notice uh, walking through our buildings. And so we're able to track work uh, at a granular level in terms of you know, what was done, how much it cost, who did the work, how much time was spent doing the work. Uh, and that allows us to report on those things. Um, to, you know, with various metrics for reports to inform business decisions, uh, performance type uh, um, evaluations and those and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then the, really the following slides are just examples uh, of the type of things we're able to report on. Uh, this particular slide is, is was part of our FY21 report, uh, just, just kind of shows what our work, work order response times were uh, where where the, the, our focus was, uh, where we spent most of our time. So in this case, you can see that uh, the majority of the time was spent on preventive type uh, maintenance work. 25% uh, was responding to, to requests for services uh, beyond uh, building maintenance and repair. So these are just various, way, various ways that we can look at what we do and uh, report on it as well. So this one just kind of shows again by the various work types or service types that we do. Uh, it's, it's, by, it's a work order count by fiscal year. Uh, you can see in 20 and 21 with COVID that uh, the demand or the work order count was, was lower. Uh, our preventive maintenance stays fairly consistent. Um, and, and on the right there, so maintenance and repair is just more responsive uh, work uh, to issues that arise. Uh, preventive maintenance is scheduled, uh, scheduled work like HVAC replacements, um, fire protection system inspections, those types of things. And then support services are things like, you know, reconf reconfiguring people's uh, work areas, moving staff from one place to another, um, those types of requests. Uh, thank you. And then we're, you know, I think, What's really important to this group also is, is cost. You know, what does it cost to do this? Uh, and, and we're capturing that, uh, that information and are able to uh, report on it in multiple ways. Uh, here you see some uh, per square foot cost data uh, over a, a number of years um, and, and where the money is being spent, the, the area. So, so again, this is just kind of meant to be an example of some of the what we're able to do with the with the data that we capture 
in that CMMS. And then this is just a, a customer satisfaction survey. We track that as well. Um, this is for FY21. Um, so, so we want to know how, how we're doing and, uh, you know, in which ways we might be able to improve. So that kind of wraps up my portion. And with that, um, I'll hand it over to Rob. Great. Thanks, Yorick. Um, so uh, last month, there were some questions about how capital projects and particularly uh, building major repair and maintenance, you know, how do those get planned and budgeted? Um, and really, that would be uh, an area where Yorick's team would really take the lead. Um, again, some of the data that, that we can pull out of uh, ViewWorks really helps set that up. Um, and we, we do this for other buildings now. We have a rolling kind of six-year window. Hey, the roof in a couple of years going to be getting toward the end of the life. You know, we better start budgeting for, for that replacement or that water heater or whatever. Obviously, we work with staff uh, to identify other concerns. Um, but, uh, it, you know, and then as we put that, that proposed kind of uh, six-year window, then uh, we, we would be running that through the library board just as you, you know, have historically updated those uh, uh, budget requests. Um, and then we would also uh, loop back, uh, not only, you know, for those projects, once they get identified, once they get funded, then uh, our team also leads uh, executing those, uh, replacing the roof or whatever. Um, and we'd be uh, looping back uh, to the board quarterly to provide updates on those. Mm -hmm. Um, next slide, please, Chloe. Um, there was also uh, a question about how internal charging uh, works, how those uh, indirects work. And I, I think Chloe will be talking a little bit about some budget reporting to provide some more visibility for, you know, for, for all of the different areas. But uh, the way this works um, with other buildings and how this would work uh, with, with the library is there's a formula that, that really aims to distribute actual maintenance costs uh, to the different buildings uh, based on use. Um, the formula is primarily driven by the size of the building. Um, and uh, again, the, the goal is just to try to distribute actual costs out so that there's a reasonable, everybody has a reasonable sense of, of uh, what it's actually costing for their operation. Um, we realize library operations are uh, probably going to be a little bit different from, from uh, offices, um, but until we really get that experience, what we're envisioning is we would still use the same allocation as if it was office space, plug it into the formula. Um, and the beauty of it is, again, with ViewWorks, we'd have, have very uh, good information about, you know, how much did... Uh, uh, colon use stick library, how much do we actually spend between utilities and janitorial and work orders and stuff. And so that once we get a year of data, then we both re report back to the board and, and really also loop back. It's like, okay, do we need to adjust that cost allocation formula? Is it, you know, is the, is the cost per square foot fairly close between offices and libraries or, you know, uh, is it different? Uh, and then we can just adjust that formula again to get back to the goal of really trying to distribute actual costs uh, so that everybody has a pretty good sense of, of um, actual use. Um, and then, yeah, the third topic for me was, uh, I think there were some questions about service level agreements. Um, as Chloe mentioned, uh, we did provide a, uh, a, a in the packet, uh, the current uh, draft of, of where really what we're trying to do here, here is really spell out, create a common understanding of what is really included in those indirect costs. What are what services can you expect? Uh, the level of of uh, quality of services as well as response times. And really try to flesh out, you know, what is a, a building. Uh, operation and, and service versus like what's an operational cost. And so we've left that in draft form because, you know, we're interested in getting feedback from the board as well as, uh, of course, staff um, and uh, really want to kind of incorporate those. And, and then uh, uh, I think we need to fine, fine tune that document. But again, really just try to spell it out in the different areas, you know, 
who replaces what types of furniture or what types of equipment? Um, you know, again, is it an operational world or is it a building world? Um, and obviously there's things that fall outside of the normal, and, you know, and, 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 you know, we just work through, work through staff and uh, work, work through things with, you know, staff level and figure out, it's like, how are we going to do this? Um, what's the right answer? But it really just kind of creates a, a kind of a expectation coming in to, you know, address most of the questions. Um, and I think with that, I think I hand it back over to Chloe. Yep. And I would say part of what will come back to the board within April is a specific approval on the service level agreements. Um, so we'll, we wanted to give you a chance to dive in and think about it and, and provide some meaningful feedback. So that's a conversation that we will return to. Finally, then on the budget reporting, as Jessica mentioned, sort of the facilities um, maintenance budget component is like one element of kind of the larger um, view that you'll have into the um, budget of the library. But what we're thinking specifically as it relates to the facilities is, um, you know, contains these elements of, of what's going on currently, what the plans are in the future for both um, capital improvement projects as well as major repairs and maintenance and sort of ongoing tracking of spending. That template is being developed now and, and will come to the board in the near future um, with, with further info and opportunities for feedback. And so with that, I would like to pause and um, open it up for some feedback or comments by the board, um, and then just remind you all that we'll incorporate feedback in, into the um, uh, approval conversation that we'll have next month. And I will stop sharing my screen um, so I can see you all. So if this gets approved in April, when do you expect to make the transition? Good question. We have come to um, we have come to a strong recommendation that it would take place starting at the current fiscal year or the next fiscal year, which is October one, FY twenty, FY twenty or FY twenty three. <laughs> so there was there was a slide that talked about allocating the internal cost, and you mentioned it was based on building size. Does does that in, and you know we were talking about replacing a roof. Does that include, does the allocated costs include the, the capital expenses for major repairs like that? I, I can take that. Um, uh, the, the cost allocation plan is for the ongoing kind of the routine, think utilities, you know, painting a wall here, that kind of thing. The th the large costs like, uh, uh, like replacing roof would be within the major repair and maintenance budget. Um, and so we would budget for it, but it's a separate, it, it's not part of that cost. Um, uh, it's, it's not caught part of that uh, indirect cost reimbursement thing that only covers the indirects only cover the, the routine, what, what you would currently budget as your, as your operating costs today. Okay, thanks. Do we have any other questions regarding this yeah, uh, report I on the a, facilities? I had a, this is Brian Clenny. I had a comment first. Uh, I think the agreement provides a lot of clarity that we were looking for, particularly new people to the board, such as myself. It really uh, helped. Um, I didn't, wasn't able to place the library buildings into one of the building service level categories. And I wanted to ask a question about which category we're, are we in? I, I can see leased facilities is clear. If a library facility is leased, it fits in leased facility. But for example, the building we're in now, is it an administrative building or is it a specialized site? It was unclear to me. So that's a that's a this is Rob again. Really good question because uh, frankly we've been having that that thought over the last was just in a meeting Monday talking about that uh, that maybe what we should do is is create a special class of uh, 
and and I'm thinking about it, maybe it's in terms of like uh, public service oriented buildings. So it would be like the library, you know, as we we're also talking about doing this with parks, you know, like as we take over the depot or the recreation center, it's a little more focused, uh, you know, so they can address some of the specific uh uh specific things uh again for outward facing service orient so so that's kind of something we've uh you know kind of started thinking about as of <laughs> monday um that maybe would be appropriate and i guess it it, it sounds like maybe that would help uh, provide some clarity for the for the uh, you and the board as well yeah i think it would thank you and uh suggestion um I really value the clarity. And then there was one paragraph that sort of introduced some ambiguity in the face of the clarity. Um, it, there's some tables, APPA tables that talk about maintenance levels of service. And my interpretation is they're talking about whole numbers one through five, which are identified in the table. And then the agreement it specifies a non-whole number, 2.5, which I interpreted as something less than two, but something more than three. And that lack of clarity right there, I think, could be improved by choosing either two or three, or if you have to do it by category, some two, some three, detailing them probably would be worthwhile. So appreciate the comment. Um, it's one of these things where the 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 thinking behind it is a little bit to your i think maybe you kind of already put your finger on it and that it may not be like in every category it might not be a two or a three and it's also uh, there, there is a little bit while well, that i think that ta those tables really provide a lot of clarity of like this is the kind of thing we're talking about it's also a little bit subjective it's like is that paint a great job or is it a good job? Um, and so there, there is inherently a little bit of uh, interpretation to it, but you know, I think that's a fair point. I mean, I think we can think about maybe by, by, um, by category, maybe provide a little bit more like uh, clarity uh, uh, for you as, as well as for everybody uh, using this. Thank you. Um, any more questions regarding the, the report? So thank you all for um, your update. I know there's a lot of hard work going on behind the scenes. And uh, thank you for making this happen. Thank you for your feedback and we will be back um, next month. Okay, thank you. Um, our next topic is an update regarding the strategic planning efforts at the library. Yes, that is me, Zay, Heidi Lewis, um, the downtown library manager. And um, there will be a slideshow that may be popping up soon, but I want to thank the Board of Trustees for having me join you for a briefing on the strategic plan. There it is. All right, so um, our next slide is an overview of what we'll discuss today in the, in the time that we have. So we wanna review the high-level schedule and strategic planning focus, update you on the activities since the last board meeting, uh, discuss board of trustees involvement, and including representation on the steering committee. So that's what we have to talk with you today as well as next steps near the end. So our next slide then. So these are one of the slides that you saw last time that we'll bring back to you each month for these briefings. So you can see that in February, we had our project kick off with this group in, in the February board meeting where you got to meet um, all of the consultants or almost all of the consultants for the project and get to hear from them and share some of your thoughts with the consultant team. We also in February had the leadership team kickoff meeting. Um, the leadership team is mostly here, um, the library management team. And so we had that, that group, and then we've done some other, other work as well in February, which I'll tell you a little bit more about. Right now, at, in March, we're finalizing the steering committee and work group to start scheduling those meetings. So that's where we're at in the schedule right now. And then on our next slide, here's the other slide that we'll be bringing back to you that you've seen before, and we'll 
We'll use this as our anchor that we are turning to community members to understand their needs and desires for library programs and services. We've got process goals and outcome goals. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on one of our process goals, which is every member of the community and every Boise Public Library staff member will know how to engage in the discussion and pro provide input, how priorities are determined, their role in making the plan a reality. Today, we're really talking about how to engage in the discussion and provide input. Um, in, in Friday's all staff meeting for, for the staff, we talked about all the ways that they can be involved in the strategic plan going forward. Here today, we wanna to talk about all the ways that the board can be involved in the strategic plan. So we'll move on to the next slide. So going back just a little bit, here's some of the work that the leadership team did in February. This is the structure of the strategic plan at this point. So you'll see on the left that we've got four staff work groups. In the middle, we have the steering committee, we have the leadership team, and then over on the right, the library board of trustees and city council, and then the project management team below. So we were really working with uh, staff on the, the four staff work groups. So we introduced that concept to them on last Friday. We're asking for their interest by this Friday. The community engagement work group is gonna ensure an inclusive process. It's gonna be designing how to ask questions, when to ask questions, where to ask questions, and what to do with the answers we receive. The library experience work group is going to be focusing on the individual and household experience of the library, as well as Boise citizens who are not interacting with the library. So non-users, we want to hear from them as well, absolutely. Then the uh, third work group is the community partners work group. They'll be focusing on our role as a library in the Boise community, as well as a city department and how we interact with other entities and organizations in Boise. And then the fourth work, work group is going to be focusing on organizational excellence. So talking about how we do what we do, the structures and systems and staffing that we have in place to carry out what we are carrying out and what we'll need to carry out. Each of those work groups has two co-chairs. One co-chair is also on the community engagement work group to make sure we have a through line, a consistent approach to, again, how we're, we're um, coordinating all these questions that we're going to be asking, all the ways that we're going to be asking them, all the places that we're going to be asking them. The other co-chair in each of the three um, purple topical work groups is also a member on the steering committee. So in, in both cases, the co-chairs are there on those other, other teams or work groups to help provide context, to be able to answer questions and begin to provide consistency going back and forth. So that's a little bit of information about the, the uh, work groups that we're, we've been working really hard on um, getting finalized with the staff. And then the steering committee is then the next piece that I, that I wanna talk about. So that's on the next slide. So the steering committee guides the work groups. Uh, the, the deliverables for this first phase are gonna be direction and key questions. So really making sure that the questions that those topical work groups are coming up with are the right questions that we want to be asking the community and staff and stakeholders. So the, the steering committee was selected by the leadership team. Um, you can see a variety of, of different, different representatives from different key city departments, as well as um, some frontline staff members, those co-chairs that I mentioned from the work groups. You can also see that we've got a bulleted point there where there's room for a library board of trustee. So we wanna make sure that we talk about that a little bit as well. So on our next slide, that's just one of the ways that the board can be involved, will be involved in the strategic plan. So we'll follow up with y'all, make sure you get a copy of this table, but here are the ways that we're thinking, um, planning that you'll be involved um, as individuals and as a group with a strategic plan. So one-on-ones with Burke, uh, board briefings, uh, community conversations, We'll be asking each of you to participate in those conversations we have with the community. Um, we'll have a lot more information for you over, over the next couple of months. An in-depth discussion and guidance on what we find, that, that summary that we hope to have for you in July. We'll really talk that through with you, get guidance from all of you. Workshopping the draft plan, reviewing, reviewing and adopting the final plan. And then this last piece in italics is the piece we're really here to talk to you about today, the steering committee member. So one of you on the board of trustees, the time commitment is 60 to 90 minutes once a month for a meeting um, each month, March through June, and then again, August through November. 
So we wanted to bring this point and this question to you today for discussion. I think this looks really great. I appreciate all the work and I appreciate the graphic was super helpful explaining how the staff is involved and how all the um, different pieces interact and communicate. So I really appreciate that. Um, and I think it's really important there's somebody from the board and the steering committee. I know, I mean, I'm hesitant to like put anybody in that mix with Tanya not here today. Because um, I think she will one day. We, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if she did or not. And we do know we do know that because Tanya's stepping off, okay, that she would not. Okay. We, we Tanya and Bill and I talked about this very question last okay. week because her tenure ends okay. just a few short months, and she was very clear. Oh, uh, this needs to be a board member that whose sure. <laughs> tenure goes beyond. I had a question about the makeup of the steering committee. Um, I think it's slide six before this one. How I'm not quite clear how many of those participants are from the library. Okay, so uh, of course, well, you see Jessica's name on there and my name, and then there are then the four co chairs. So there will be six members from the library on this 13 person team. Um, okay, and we, yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you for the question. So in terms of discussing this item, were, was your goal to select that trustee member today? If, if that's a possibility, that would, that would be wonderful. Okay. Are there any other comments? Questions about the overall presentation? Um, so I think we have, except for Tanya, we have all the other board members either in the room or online. Is that correct? Yes. And I suppose I would open it up. Or just... I'm still here. Okay, great, okay. thank you. We just can't, we can't see you, so we just wanted to, we wanted to hear your voice. I guess I would open it up at this point and go around the room and see if there are board members or trustees who um, are, are very interested in raising their hand for this involvement. Well, Phil, I certainly would be willing to do it and interested. I'm not going to fight anybody if somebody else is interested, but I'm certainly willing. Okay. Uh, put me in the same category. Yeah, probably all three of us are in that category as well. <laughs> um, let me ask this. Um, when do you have to know who that person is? That's a great question. We are hoping to have the kickoff meeting for the, the steering committee as our next meeting. And we are hoping to have that in the month of March. And we don't wanna schedule that meeting, meeting until we have the, the final steering committee member. Well, I guess it's a reflection on the trustees that we're all here for a reason and we're all interested. <laughs> um, I guess I don't have a, a standard process for resolving this. Um, Phil, to me, it kind of makes sense if you're interested, just giving your one of the officers, it makes sense just to me practically for you to be maybe doing that, taking that position. Well, I am very interested in it. I think this is one of the key things that the board does. And, and um, you know, one of the things I can commit to is making sure that I come back to the other trustees and discuss what I'm learning in the steering committee and where I think that's headed and trying to, to make sure that I'm representing everybody's thoughts. Um, um, 
probably the the uh, way to handle this is to see if anybody would like to make a motion to uh, propose a person. Um, I would move to place Phil Magnuson on the steering committee as the representative of the board. I second. Uh, okay, thank you for that. Uh, so the nomination has been for myself, Phil. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so um, I'll be very happy to serve as the uh, board representative on the steering committee. Thank you, Phil. We'll be very happy to have you. Okay. Um, thank you for the update. Um, it it really helps a lot to understand the overall plan and see how the pieces fit together. So I think we all appreciate that. Thank you. Um, is there any other discussion on this topic? Any comments on the strategic planning? Hey, Phil, this is a uh, council member, Holly Burton. Sure. I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm really excited to be part of this process. I think some of you folks saw that my name was there as far as the council um, member kind of representation. It's really important um, to me, like Phil said earlier, that I'm communicating with the rest of our council members the best that I can and making sure that I'm representing, you know, some consistent thinking there. So nobody is surprised, you know, going forward in the future. Nobody wants to be that way. Um, one of the things that I, you know, I've done a lot of strategic planning through my work at other nonprofits, and I am excited to see that although there only is one um, board member who's on this group, there's a lot of board member um, involvement and activation, which I think is super, super exciting. Um, I know that when we completed our, our recent strategic plan here at BBP, like, like this board, everybody really wanted to be involved at that intimate level, but between those, those briefings, those one-on-ones, being able to sit in on some of those community conversations, there really does look like there's a ton of opportunity for everyone to be involved. And so I'm excited to work with everybody on this. Yeah, we're, we're really glad to have you. It, it's, um, it's great to have a city council person with us who has your level of commitment to the library and excitement around it. So thanks a lot for that. Yeah, thank you, Phil. Okay, if there's no further discussion of this, I think we'll close this topic and move on to the policy review topic. Okay, thank you. Thanks, this is everybody. Sarah. Uh, so uh, as Jessica reminded you, we actually just reviewed uh, section 5.0 in September with Kathy Salter, head of collection uh, development, acquisitions and technical services. Um, to make sure all of our new board members understood the processes. Um, normally we would have waited a little longer in the rotation, but we did discover um, our form for our request for reconsideration was not as clear as it should have been. So we had already planned to bump this ahead, um, which was great timing. Uh, so I did make the summary sheet for you all this time because there were so many changes. So hoping you had time ahead of time to read through that. Um, but I would like to ask, do you have any questions regarding any of the changes that we're considering? Clear. Okay, thank you. Uh, we do need a vote. Oh, we do. <laughs> we do. There's a there's a handful. There is of a policy. Yeah. Yeah. So policy five point zero one requires a vote, and five point zero two. Um, I would move to approve. Policies 5.1 and 5.02 as revised. I second the motion. Okay, can we have a voice vote? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Thank you. Um, I believe that concludes uh, the real business of the uh, meeting. So thank you, everybody. Uh, we do need to select a trustee to review the payment vouchers for next month. Um, Carrie, do you have someone who's next on the rotation? Next on the rotation is uh, Trustee Pantera. And 
will you be able to uh, do the voucher approval? Yes. Thank you. Then our next meeting date is scheduled for Wednesday, April 13th. I'm wondering if um, people know whether or not they will be able to attend on that day. So everybody that knows they will not be available. I, well, I think we'll we'll proceed as planned then, unless, <laughs> unless it changes. So um, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate uh, kind of the rush through things and consideration of those that had other commitments. Um, I believe it's time for a motion to adjourn. Bill, before we do that, I'd like to uh, add one piece, and I will send this to you as well. But I, we have uh, a couple of uh, save the dates for your awareness. Uh, May 21st will be our summer reading kickoff, um, and we'll invite you all uh, to that. It's going to be a fun celebration of reading. Uh, and then BCAF, which was mentioned also, we have the dates for that. That will be September 16th and 17th. Um, so, and we're actually going to be holding that at Sue Boise uh, for the first time. So we're really excited about um, being able to work uh, to uh, Boise Comic Arts Festival in the zoo. Um, okay. So we'll we'll get those on your calendars. But I did want to uh, when I, well, I had a moment put a plug in for that because I think they'll both be really fun. Thank right. you, Phil. Thanks for the update. Um, can we get a motion to adjourn? Or do we do we need a motion to adjourn? Yes. <laughs> I, I think I heard a motion. Who was that? I move to adjourn. I second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. It's good to see everybody.